Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, all my students for the jelly plate class coming up. Um, I thought I'd better give you a quick, it might be helpful, since one of the things we'll be working on tomorrow is in our journal, doing jelly plate papers for our journal. And I had mentioned to you doing a journal from an old book. So I wanted to kind of just recap a couple of things so maybe you could be prepared for tomorrow or at least know what we're going to do. Um, first of all, you can use anything you want for a journal. If you've already got something going, no matter what kind of book it's in, go ahead and use that. If you want to use a brand new journal, that's fine too. Um, I have this one. I have a couple of these mixed media uh, that are only seven by 10 and the pages tear out of them, but these are really great to use for journaling. So, um, if, if you want to use something like this, a new journal, that's fine. If you'd like to kind of adventure into creating your own journal in a, in an old book, which is kind of fun because you can just, um, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff in here. You can add your jelly papers, you can uh, do little collages, you can actually do some artwork. I think I've got some paintings in here somewhere. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I put together one of these little books. And let me move this out of the way. Um, here is kind of a fun, cool little book that I got from a friend of mine. It was given to her as a gift, and um, I somehow ended up with it. But it's Orbiting the Giant Hairball. So it's a, um, a Corporate Fool's Guide to Surviving with Grace. It's a really fun little book that's already got some pretty cool stuff happening. I don't want to lose that page. But I started getting it um, prepared to do... Uh, to use for the class. So let me just show you what I do. I've got my book. Now, by the time you start adding things, you're going to start getting really fat, a really thick book. I have a couple that I can't even close. They just sit open in my studio. But what you do is I go through and I'll take like, you know, three pages and I glue them together. Then I'll leave pages that are just loose. These are pages that I'll end up um, journaling on. This was already in the book, so that's kind of fun. Here's some pages that are glued, and it makes them really thick. It adds a really nice, uh, you know, it makes them really nice and thick. So I've got this far. Let me see. Have I? And I, I, I wanted to keep this little guy, so I just kind of folded him over because he's a really cute little chick. Um, but what I do is, let's start here. You kind of go through and investigate and see if there's things you want to keep. Like this might be a good page to keep. This one, I don't really care about. So I have a little cutting mat. I slip in there. You don't want to tear them out. It's better if you, let me grab a ruler. It's better if you cut them out. That way you don't really ruin the binding of your book. It's not always easy to do. And I never throw these away because these are great little papers for us to jelly print on or just to tear up and use um, in something else. So I wanna keep that. Um, these pages don't really what you don't see is what you get. Now these three pages, I don't really care about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some school glue. You can also use the good glue, and this is pH balanced, and it is um, archival, and no acid, everything's great, but it's also $10 for that. So unless you're creating a piece of artwork, you can just go ahead and use school glue. It doesn't take a lot and then just brush it around because you know with an old book, just about anything you do is gonna get your pages to stick together. I'm gonna to put some on that page. Now, just like when we're laying papers flat, you kinda of wanna work it 
or you're going to end up with really crinkly papers, which isn't a bad thing. But if you don't want to end up with crinkly papers, you kind of have to work it a little bit. Uh, make sure you don't use so much glue that it's getting too wet and it's not going to dry. So there's another one. Now I've got another page. Now that's, so that's three pages together. And that makes that really nice and thick. I want to save this page. Got to save that one. And, and sometimes they're just fun things, but you know you can use those with something else. That's going to be a fun page. So I am going to take these two pages out. I'm not even going to use my ruler. I'm just going to do a straight line. And, and you're just loosening, lightening the load a little bit on the book. Um, so you'll be able to kind of close it. Cool page. Um, I am going to take all of these out and create some space in here. Let's see if I got that to cut all at once. Of course not. It's always good to make sure you have a nice, sharp, exacto knife. And that's just going to be e make it easy on the spine of the book. I don't need those. And I just keep going through the whole book. Um, you can see there's some really cool stuff, even blank pages. So now that I've got that start, those cut out, I can go back. Do I want to glue some of these together? I definitely want to glue these. There's one. Let me get that kind of laid out there flat, nice and flat before I glue the next page. So there's two. And it, if your your edges aren't glued down perfectly, that's okay. Um, you know, you want to make sure you don't let the glue run over onto the side where it's going to glue more pages than you really want to glue. Let's put that one down. So there you go. That We start with that. So now I've got this much to work on. Now, how do I want to start working on these, you might be asking. So I've got an answer for you on that. Let me pull out my, I've just got some white uh, Artist Loft white gesso. Now, of course, all of this is really good if you can do it beforehand. And I know this is short notice for you for class. There we go. Um, but I want to uh, give you a heads up and give you a little bit of time to be able to get your books ready. So I'm just going to take some gesso, and this is pretty um, transparent gesso. I'm not really liking that. Um, and, and as you can see, this will dry really fast. I don't like that gesso. Let me grab some... Uh, I'm just going to grab some just plain white paint. Because I think this is going to be a little bit more transparent. And you can imagine you're going to have to do this step by step. Um, because now we've got a wet page here. We've got some very fun things here. So I mean, I might want to leave. Like I want to leave that little chair. Um, I might want to leave the word contents up there in the corner. There's kind of a crazy little, oh, there's a little, uh, little, it's either a dog or a mouse. 
on this page. So as you're going, cover up, you know, you can cover it all up later on, but as you're going, kind of uh, pick and choose what you want to keep in your, your page. And this white paint, this is just a white acrylic paint, is actually working better than the gesso. And it's acrylic paint, it's gonna dry pretty fast. So I can come back to this throughout the day and add a couple more coats. But now I've created some pages that are going to be really good for me to um, add some uh, collage and some art onto. And if, like I said, if I want those little guys to get covered up, I can just cover them up when I come to it, come back to it. But now I'm going to have pages ready to um, go ahead and paint, go ahead and collage on, go ahead and add my papers on. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, once I've got a couple of done, I just kind of set it aside and, and then I'll come back and paint some more pages. Now, it might be a good idea to go through, if you're going to go this route, go through your book and tear, you know, cut out your pages. Make sure to save your pages because you're going to use that paper um, and, and glue the pages together. I suggest gluing three together because it makes it really sturdy. Um, maybe glue three, cut out three, glue three, cut out two. You just kind of go back and forth. And there's nothing that says that later on you can't cut out more pages. But right now, um, this will get us going. And so we have some blank pages to start with. Now in this book, I think I've already got some that I've actually painted a few pages in here. Some of them I'll paint with black gesso and I find words within the text in the book and I kind of let them stay, stay, um, stay, I kind of let them show up. This one says, be exposed, maybe, try me, go somewhere the last time they would turn. It doesn't matter what it says. Somehow you can make it into a piece of art. So um, I hope that's really helpful. I hope you can get a chance to work on that today. And um, if you're not in one of my classes, because I'm going to put this up as a quickie YouTube, um, this is the kind of fun stuff we do in class and I love jelly plate uh, prints, and we're gonna be adding them into to our books and making little pieces of art, little collages, and it's really fun. So um, get your books out, get ready for tomorrow, and I'll see you in class. Bye.